Hi, welcome to the October episode of Vegetables Matter. This is a craft cast about my fiber life. Uh, my name is Chloe and I live in Utah. Um, this is the 12th episode, which means uh, last year I started in November and so next, um, yeah, so this is kind of the completion and then next next month, November, we'll, we'll be starting year two. So I will have a giveaway to announce um, at the end of this episode um, to kind of celebrate that mile mark that I've made. Um, it's been an interesting year of, of craft casting. Um, yeah, just kind of lots of questions about how I'm doing it, why I'm doing it, um, you know, learning curve, all of that kind of stuff. But I keep enjoying it, um, and I, I personally am someone who enjoys watching craft casts, so I do have this idea in my mind that, you know, when I'm 60 or something, I can be going back through these and watching my own craft cast and remembering these days. So honestly, that, that's, a big, that's a big motivation for why I'm doing these, um, as well as connecting with people um, in the fiber community and staying in touch with, with some friends who live far away. So... Um, Let's get started. Today, um, I just have a couple finished objects and then I have kind of some new stuff that I got and some new stuff I'm working on and a bunch of dye baths. Most of them are not completed, but I have kind of a lot of stuff in the works. So just kind of go through that. I'm hoping this will be a relatively short episode, but we'll see. Okay, so the very first finished object, um, I showed most of it done last time, um, but it is the B-Mobile. You can see it up here, <laughs> they're kind of floating around. Um, that's not a gr I'll, I'll, I'll try to do some close-ups of it as well, because um, that is kind of far away, but you can just kind of see their, their movement there. As soon as I got them hanging from the sticks, then I really enjoyed seeing these little bees in flight. So. Um, when I first made it, I just started laughing and laughing. I was pretty delighted by it. So anyway, a little bee mobile. I've had it up in the house um, longer than I think I would have just because I've been wanting to show it um, to the podcast um, and then and then kind of get it put away for this fall and then wintry season, but it'll come back out in the spring and summer. So yeah, finally got this little one completed. Um, the other kind of finished thing I have, this was a finished object I showed last time, but I wanted to dye it and I have now dyed it. So here are these socks. Ah, much better lighting. Sorry, backwards. Uh, although still you're not quite seeing the color. So I dyed these with uh, Hopi Black Sunflower Seeds. Still not getting the color. Let's do a white background and see if that'll work better. I can't tell. Um, if not, I'll try to put some, some pictures in. I soaked these um, ahead of time for plenty of time, but it did dye unevenly. You can see there, it's a lot lighter. I I got it all ready, been working a lot, prepared it as I was making dinner late one night, um, and then just threw these in before I went to bed. So I wasn't able to kind of keep moving them around. So it did die unevenly, but I don't mind it so much. I have yet to rinse these. Um, I, as soon as I finish showing this right now, I'm gonna get them um, rinsed up today as well. So this was the first thing I threw into the dye bath. And then I thought, oh, that was quite dark. Let's see what else I can get. So next up, I threw in this skein of Icelandic. This I had processed by Spinderella's recently. Um, this was the second in the dye bath, really pretty um, as well. Let me get this to go. I am bad at this. I'll try to post pictures. I don't, there's a lot though, so I don't know if I'll post everything. So there's that. And then I decided to do a third dye bath as well with it, but I did decide to re-steep um, the Hopi black sunflower seeds. And so did that plus the leftovers from this. So. Um, I'll show that first. They, they just keep getting a little bit paler and paler. Um, I will just say the process for that I do for Hopi black sunflower seeds. Um, I, just like in the electric tea kettle, I just get some water really hot and then I pour that on top of the sunflower seeds, let that sit for an hour or two, 
strain the seeds out and then put the dye stuff in. So that's all the heat it gets is just that initial hot water. Um, that's kind of what I've heard and I know people like to do temperatures um, say oh once it gets above this temperature that's not good. I that's cool and I maybe should get more into that. I do also like this idea of not having to have that like how did people I mean these are Hopi black sunflower seeds how did the Hopi do this you know hundreds of years ago well you can get you know boiling is, is a pretty obvious temperature and then if it's just cooler than that then that's that's pretty natural so um, I enjoyed doing that with this that's how I did it before um, this is my second time dying with with black sunflower seeds um, yeah so I did it that way again again none of this stuff has been rinsed but I'll be doing that shortly <laughs> That was a crazy sound. Okay, let's start again. Um, okay, Hobie Black Sunflower Seeds. Um, I have, I did grow some as well this year and they're they're laying out to dry, so I'll try to put a photo in of that right now as well. Um, so I'll be collecting my own. This other stuff was just stuff that I purchased at my fiber fair. Oh, I got fiber in my mouth. Okay, so those are like all the finished things really. Um, I've been doing um, a fair bit of knitting, but can't talk about that because that is for a gift exchange. So um, it's not 100% done. I think next episode it will be, and I'll try to do a little segment and post it when it's more appropriate to post. So just to have that talked about. Um, okay, last time I talked about needing pH strips with... Um, with the safflower dye that I did. And so I did order that um, through Dharma Trading Company. I normally don't like to order things. Um, I like just getting things locally, not have all the shipping and, and all of that stuff. But I decided to bite the bullet. And here are my um, pH strips. So it's just this small little roll and you just pull off, you know, like an inch or so. And then um, you pull off an inch or so and then you can dip that into uh, your your dye bath and check the pH so I haven't really used it much yet I actually did start finally start playing around with it today just checking like my normal water um, just to see what that was so um, yeah that'll be interesting as I continue doing some dyes because I do have a lot of dye baths in the works um, because I was ordering something then I thought oh you know I might as well try to order a few other things as well and so I decided to get some indigo um, so here's that and, and I'm hoping to, to get this done soon and then this is just some stuff to help with the indigo um, to get it yeah there's a whole process I haven't done it before so yeah looking forward to, to trying that out at some point um, also I guess since I've already shown it this white cloth um, they they had a bunch of stuff that was like extra cheap because there were some flaws in it. I actually don't see the flaw, but I thought, oh, let's grab this. It can be a ground cloth or I don't know. We'll see. It's cloth and I'll try using it. It's linen. Yeah. Some white linen. Um, speaking of stuff that I got, I finally decided to get my Shave em to Save em passport. So here I have that. Um, and it just has all of the breeds. It kind of shows them um all and then there's you know just a little page for each one and you can put your stamp in it when you get that and then you know have a little bit of info about it so got that um don't have any stamps yet i do have some fiber from some of these breeds but i don't have stamps for them but i don't care so much about getting prizes and things like that so i think i'll like draw a little stamp for myself um to show that I am using those and I yeah so there's that um, oh along with that they just sent this little pin shave them to save them I'm not much of a pin user but maybe I'll try putting that on something mm, it's a little chilly out here my nose is running a bit okay so next thing I will talk about is some other things that I got. Um, 
For Equinox, my husband and I went down to Chaco Canyon in New, Me New Mexico, and there is a shop in Cortez, Colorado, um, which you can go through there on the way down, um, that I really like. It's called Farm to Yarn, and it's like a collective of um, local, um, local fiber artists and, you know, dyers, spinners, knitters, all of that, plus, you know, as well, the people who are actually raising um, sheep and alpaca, things like that. So it's a, it's a space for them to have a shop and have classes and have like a community center for that. So um, it's always a little bit hard to, to actually, like, I always want to go, but it, it can be hard to go when they're open, just because as we're passing through, it's often when they're not open. So um, anyway, this time we really made some effort and, and stopped in, and I wish that they had more local stuff. They do have that, but then they also just have, like, commercial stuff or, you know, it's, like, commercial but then, like, dyed by someone local, but it's just acid dyes and not really my style as much. Um, but I did decide to get some stuff, so let's see, what did I get? I guess I'll talk about these two first. So... Um, this I'm already using in a project, um, I swatched for it. So these two are both, um, brown sheep, top of the lamb, sport weight. So there's the thing. So, and this is, this is common to find this type of yarn in Four Corners, maybe at other places as well. And at, at Farm to Yarn, they say they always keep some of this because the Navajo weavers in the area really like this. So they, they use it a lot in their, in their weavings. Um, and then I realized that this brown sheep I've talked about before. I had some roving from brown sheep, and this is also brown sheep. It's also lamb's pride, but then they also do some other stuff under this name brown sheep. I don't know how or why um, there's that differentiation, but anyway. So this I got um, with the intent to dye it. Um, it's just a white. And then this cream I got with this blue. So this was not sold as that same thing. Shoot, I think I have the, there we go. Nope. I have it somewhere. I thought. Oh yeah, this is it. Got confused. Okay, so this was not sold as brown sheep, but it feels exactly the same to me. I think that this dyer takes the brown sheep, dyes it, and then um, this is the product. So she had a bunch of like acid dyed stuff, but then she also had a bin of naturally dyed stuff. So I ended up getting this. This is indigo dyed. Um, and so these two are going to make a color work cowl together. Um, this is the dyer, so it's Wooly Lizard, hand dyed yarns and fibers. And um, yeah, I guess that's it. Um, oh yeah, so the pattern that I'm making with it, you can see I've started. Um, is uh, Maria Muscarella's hoarfrost cowl and hood. So these are pictures of it. Um, it's this really pretty color work cowl. When I first saw it, I really thought of um, kind of some stars and uh, twilighty stuff. So that's kind of right up my alley. So I got really excited about it. Um, I bought this pattern just recently. She, Maria, did a um, she had like one month where she donated all proceeds from her patterns to the ACLU. Um, and I thought, and it was particularly after some horrific thing happening in the US. And um, so that was kind of her response to it saying, oh, let's, let's donate towards this cause. And I thought, hmm, I like to, I like to uh, give a little money to different causes um, every month. And so I thought, oh, that sounds like a really good idea. So I bought a number of her patterns. Um, yeah, so I've cast on now. She says to use a certain size needle, um, but then there's like a ribbing type thing, although it's not actually a ribbing. Um, and then there's like plain stockinette, and then there's color work. And I've found that 
you really need to change needle sizes for that. So I did decide to go ahead and change needles, although I thought, oh, you know, maybe she wants it to be looser in one area and tighter in another, but I just thought, you know what, I've learned that when I do color work, I need to go up two needle sizes, and that's what I swatched for, um, was that. And so I haven't actually tried it with smaller needles. Um, and then when I do ribbing, I need to go down a needle size. So there's actually three sizes difference between the color work and the ribbing. So I'm there now. Um, I'm, I, my other needles, I was looking for them everywhere. I was like, where are they? Where's the next size up? I don't have them. I don't have them. Like, I, but I should have them. Where are they? And I realized, oh, they're at work. Those are what I'm currently using for a, a the project that I use like to go to meetings and stuff at work. So um, I'm going to have to, luckily that's almost finished over there, half finished, and then I'll have to cast on the other one. But I think I'll steal it after I, you know, do the final ribbing on this thing I'm working on. And then I can use it for this, get through the solid section, and then switch to my other needle for the color work section, which is most of it. Give the other needle back to the, to the work project and I should be good. So that's the plan. <laughs> Do, do a little bit of needle swapping around. So there's that. I've been wanting to cast this on for a while. Um, okay, then there has also been this make along that um, I've heard about through Nadir Tani or Kalisha. I guess I should say Kalisha from the Nadir Tani podcast. And it is a BIPOC make along. And when she was telling about it, she's not hosting it, but she's like a sponsor of it. So she's like contributed prizes and stuff like that. Um, when she was first telling about it, I just thought, oh, that's so wonderful. You know, it would be great to participate, but I'm generally really slow to like find the pattern, find the yarn, do the swatching, like figure it all out. It takes me quite a while. And I just thought I have enough things that, that I have that I'm trying to get to. I can't just suddenly add something else. But then, 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 I came across a pattern, it's called Hat Dana, and it's by someone. <laughs> um, and I was just like, yes, I have to do it. And then seeing, um, well, I got so excited by it, and then I went to the pattern, and it was a black designer. And, um, and so I just thought, okay, with the excuse of the BIPOC make-along, then I really want to just like let this jump ahead and just, you know, try to try to do this right now. Um, so the BIPOC make-along, it's, um, you know, BIPOC is black indigenous people of color. So it's just trying to highlight designs by these designers. Um, I know some people have been interested in having it be yarns from BIPOC, um, dyers or makers of, of some sort or the other um, and that's great if you do that but they are really trying to focus on the designers for this um, for this one so I will post her name and the pattern and all of that so that um, I am spreading the word the pattern was pricier than I would normally spend money on I'm, I'm pretty I tend to not really buy patterns um, and this one was eight dollars um, but I just thought you know that's kind of the whole point of this make-along is to financially be supporting these people as well as getting the word out about their designs and so I thought you know I'm just gonna do it that sounds like a good enough cause to me so um, I've swatched for it and then I bought the pattern I still need to get it printed out um, and I've decided to use so it's a obviously a hat bandana type thing um, and I just think it's going to work really well with my dreadlocks I mean I saw it and it was just like oh my gosh like I need something like that I've, I've needed something especially when I'm camping and sleeping I just need something that contains my hair better <laughs> and so it makes sense that it would be from a black designer because she does have dreadlocks and so it's just perfect so um, I was looking at what yarns I might use it calls for a worsted weight so I was looking around um, and I found this hand spun that I have. This is actually the only hand spun, the only stuff I've ever spun from a drop spindle. So it's drop spun. Um, and there's this, and then I do have more of it still to be spun. So um, yeah, and this was quite appropriate because um, this is the other time that I went to farm to yarn. This was, you know, a year ago, yeah actually. I think it was like uh, autumnal equinox for both of them. Um, the year before I'd gone to farm to yarn and this is what I had bought. 
that time. That might have been from the same person, Wooly Lizard. It could be. It very well could be. This is not naturally dyed, obviously. This is CVM, though, and I had never um, worked with CVM. CVM and Rommeldale are considered the same um, breed. But CVM, I think, has more um, color variation. California variegated mutant. Um, anyway, so that's cool that I have this. And on that same trip, we went up to Mesa Verde, which is right outside of Cortez, Colorado, um, to visit our friend Venancio, who is a weaver, a Navajo weaver. And um, he was the one who told me about Farm to Yarn originally, and I managed to go and get this. And he's a weaver, quite a prolific, wonderful weaver. He's amazing. Um, and his brother creates weaving tools. He's more of a woodworker. He creates looms and... Um, the different tools that they use, like, I don't, I don't know all the terms, but they're like combs that they do to, to, um, to bring the fiber down. And anyway, different, different weaving tools as well as drop spindles. And Venancio gave me the spindle that his brother made at that time. His brother's name is Long as well. And I can never quite remember it, but they call him Artie for short. So I already made this. And um, right after, uh, right when we came home, it must have been in August. It wasn't autumnal equinox. Because right when we came home, then we went up to the um, Fort Bridger Rendezvous, which is every Labor Day. And we camped with our teepee for the first time. We've camped there before, but not like in the rendezvous with the teepee and all of that. And we camped there for the first time. We were planning to bring a trailer. I forget what happened. Things were crazy. We were exhausted. And somehow we couldn't bring the trailer and so we just had to be crammed in and I had been planning to bring a spinning wheel and all of this stuff um and I really wanted I forget if I really wanted to start spinning this or anyway I had a number of projects I think I was weaving then and so I wanted to bring the loom and a spinning wheel and all this stuff and then we were going to be crammed in the car with the teepee <laughs> so not a lot of space and I just thought you know what I can't bring all that stuff but I just got this I just got this fiber let's pair these together it was wonderful. I had so much fun, the whole rendezvous, just spinning and spinning. I haven't touched it since. Well, I did pull this off and I, I plied this together on a wheel and then I must have done just a little bit more after that at some point, um, but not a lot. But as I'm working on the hat Dana, then I think that'll be the perfect motivation when I need more to uh, continue spinning this up. So really excited to um, found a project for this and to be able to participate in the BIPOC make along. Okay, Okay. lastly, let's just talk about some dye baths. Um, again, I'll try to show a bunch of pictures of this stuff. So um, a couple weeks ago, sometime, I don't remember when, um, just over a week ago. Just over a week ago, um, on the way home from a trip, we stopped and did a little walk somewhere. Ooh, sun's coming out. And um, i had been wanting to gather a bunch of sagebrush um, for that project for my husband, dyeing a bunch of yarn that I had processed um, so that I can then make the Robin Hoodie sweater for him. Um, and so I'm planning to do sagebrush in an iron pot for that. So I went and gathered lots of sagebrush, probably not quite as much as I need, but I thought, well, let's just try. We'll see how this works. Um, and been busy but I finally just yesterday put it in water I haven't like boiled it or anything yet maybe today or tomorrow maybe I can um, do that or maybe it'll just soak for a while I don't know um, my, my plan is to test it before I do the whole giant batch of like two pounds of yarn <laughs> um, so I'm gonna I'm going to create the entire dye bath so that it is hopefully the same color but then I'll take out a small portion of that and put in just one skein and just see if that's getting kind of the color I want. And then if it is, then I can do the rest and hopefully that'll work. And the one color might be a little bit different, but I figure I can kind of casually put it in or, you know, make sure to do like the, the cuffs and things like that with that slightly different skein. So that's the plan. I think it's a good plan. We'll see.
I haven't done that before. Um, so that is the sagebrush. Um, yesterday I also finally went and gathered for my neighbors. Um, they have a big walnut tree and I've been wanting to, to take some of their the holes from the from their walnuts and do a dye bath with that. Um, actually it would have been at that same rendezvous that I talked about. My husband got um, a big piece of leather and it's lighter than he'd like it to be. He wants it to go with some pants that he has, um, some buckskin pants. And so we, we thought, oh, it could be really nice to try to dye it in walnut holes. So um, I, did, I did that. I, I kind of took the holes off yesterday and soaked them in water. Um, you can just leave them soaking for a while or you can boil them. And I thought, oh, it sounds easier just to leave them soaking for a while. So got those in water as well yesterday. Um, yeah, that's good. And then... And then and then, oh, huh. well, okay, I'll, I'll hold off talking about that for a second longer. Um, I'm making black beans today. We, we go through a lot of black beans. We eat a lot of um, burrito style stuff and we um, bake, or not bake, we boil up our own black beans. We do a big batch at a time and then freeze a bunch of them and then just pull them out. Um, so doing that and was just inspired by a... a a video that Maria Muscarella, who I should say is Ninja Chickens online, um, that she posted a, a little while back about black bean dye. And I've tried dyeing with black bean before. I've been really disappointed with the results, but her talking about it kind of got me excited to try it again. So I thought, mm, while I'm doing black beans, I might as well try it again. So I think I'll do that. There's a chance I won't. There's a chance I'll just say, actually, I don't really want to do it. But um, I got some roving soaking um, to, to dye that roving with black beans. Um, and then pretty soon, um, before Halloween, I'm really hoping to get the indigo dye bath made up. It just seems kind of like a fun, like concoction-y fun thing for the season. Um, you know, pouring things back and forth, creating all this magic there. So hoping to get that done soon as well. Okay. And then the last thing, the last dye bath is this stuff, um, I tried dyeing in uh, copper and ammonia that I had laying around. I've had for a couple of years just a, a jar with copper and ammonia in it and occasionally I dye with it. I've gotten some really pretty colors that way and I still had about half of it left and I thought, oh, let's, let's try using it all up. So I, I finally used it all up. Um, I diluted it with water, which I haven't done before, I don't think. And it's pretty diluted. So, um, yeah, it's not that exciting of a color, which is a little bit sad because this goes into the giveaway. Um, my plan was, so I'm doing two of these Rommeldale and then one of the Icelandic. Um, but my plan was to do kind of these two matching ones, one for me and then one to be the giveaway. Um, and I wanted to do, I wanted to try doing like some self striping yarn. Um, and anyway, so I need to reskein this to do the self striping to have a, a much longer thing to go with so that then you can just dye part of it and then that would be a long enough um, amount that it could be self striping. So my plan was to do copper and then um, with indigo for part of it as well and kind of be going back and forth between the two. The copper didn't turn out as well as I would have liked, um, but it might still work. Anyway, so I don't quite know what the finished giveaway is going to look like. But my plan for the giveaway is a skein of this, possibly this skein, or possibly if I'm just not liking it, maybe something else. But I have hope that I can salvage this. Even if I just over dye it all with indigo, that would be fun too. So um, so uh, um, just to, to talk a little bit more about what this is, this is a Rommeldale fleece that I bought at the Great Basin Fiber Arts Fair from the people who grew, who raised the sheep, um, they are called Nottlewonk. And they are, I think they're like on the border of Utah and Idaho. Um, anyway, so this was a Rommeldale, which is on the Shave em to Save em, um threatened list. Yeah, they're on the threatened. So Rommeldale and CVM are considered the same, um, but CVM is a little bit of a mutant 
California variegated mutant of Rommeldale. So anyway, I got this fleece there and then I had um, most of it, maybe two thirds or three fourths of it processed by Spinderella's in Salt Lake City um, into two different types of yarn. This is the fingering weight and then there's maybe like a DK weight or something, something a little bit thicker than this. Um, yeah, so that would be what I'm giving you and then I'm, I will be hand dyeing it something. Here's some copper, indigo, or maybe something else. That is the giveaway. I will be announcing um, the winner of that next time. So, oh shoot, I forgot to think about what I wanted you to do. I guess comment down below. Um, comment down below. I guess I do want some feedback about the the podcast. So tell me something that you've liked over the past year, um, something that sticks out to you um, and or something that you'd like to see in the future. Um, yeah, so that will be, yeah, comment down below about that um, on the YouTube comments. And from the people who comment, I will choose a winner and get that off to you. Um, okay, that is everything for this episode. Um, Woohoo! I've been really wanting to squeeze in time for this all month long and haven't had the chance yet. So I'm happy to finally get it in. And yeah, it's really great to, to continue with this. I, I really do enjoy it. All right. Love you guys. Bye-bye. So I am boiling or simmering the sagebrush on this fire over here. Looks pretty cool with that steam coming out. the bubbling cauldron.